у вас в Українському кризовому медіа-центрі, в медіа-центрі реформ. Ми тут дуже багато дискутуємо про те, що відбувається в країні, як ми її змінюємо на краще, і взагалі просто змінюємо на краще чи на гірше, це вже дискутуємо. Today we have a nice chance to shift our discussion a bit for the sake of talking from the analytical, academic point of view. And we have a chance today to discuss those ideas that Anders Aslund in his title Ukraine, what went wrong and how to fix it, has expressed. From what I understand, this book has been uh, resu the result of discussions with many officials and as a way of a teaser to the main presentation I'd like to give the floor now to Minister of Economic Development and Trade of Ukraine Mr. Alveras Abramovichus with his idea of what went wrong and how to fix it and how Anders may help with his title. Uh, Good afternoon, colleagues. Good afternoon, esteemed media representatives. It's been a pleasure to participate in this event. I think uh, Anders Usland, Aslund uh, has earned a long-standing fame of a leading specialist in economics, uh, economy and politics in Eastern Europe, in the Baltic states, in Ukraine and Russia. And he is by far one of the most prolific writers and political commenters about the region, given the rate at which he churns out his articles and books. Uh, he is by far the top. And uh, I'd like to thank you, Anders, for your next title that is about to be published in a very right moment for this country to explain what has went, has gone wrong in this country and how we might come back to the right path. Uh, starting from the time when uh, I was about to make the time uh, uh, the ministry and hope by the, the time of your next book, Dmitry will join me with his memoirs. Uh, Sadly, the book lists a range of problems that we have. Uh, we still have problems of corruption. Uh, not enough has been done in the area of deregulation, uh, in terms of privatizing state enterprises, and many things remain to be done uh, for the administration of the president and the cabinet. And we are, uh, we've just been to the parliament when we discussed uh, also with members from Sama Pomich about the about matters of privatization which is one of the most relevant topics widely discussed for the past two weeks given that every week every month money is sucked away from these remaining state enterprises and the more we procrastinate with privatization the less good things will happen uh, to these enterprises uh, 115 billions of losses were generated by these enterprises last year instead of 14 billion of uh, revenues add to here 13 billion of subsidies and benefits and we end up with three billion dividends to the state budget. Uh, many would even ask, uh, why would they pay these dividends? They should have better invested the money in capital development. And our whole team in the Ministry of Economy as one, uh, sees as one of its priority aims is uh, this matter of uh, privatization of state enterprises, of pri public enterprises. A relevant bill on corporate governance has been already registered with the Parliament and we are going to defend it in the Ministry of Economy next week. And we are going to introduce an Institute of Independent 
directors to have uh, tops of enterprises uh, going through mandatory audit, international audit. And let's move ahead though. Uh, I think Andres will tell more about the current problem standing also before enterprises I've mentioned. And I think it, it can be said in the wake of the Yalta conference that we've just had, uh, it was a nice chance for the government to hear external vision, external advice about the range of problems, about what has been done correctly, what needs to be improved or changed. And it is a positive sign that we finally set up dates for the Ukrainian German Business Forum, uh, forum, forum in Berlin. We are going to have it on 23rd of October, much in the way we had it in the United States. And this important event will be of the topmost level, featuring Angela Merkel, German Chancellor, Chancellor and uh, Premier Yatsenyuk, and many other dignitaries. The idea is to tell the German colleagues about things in development in Ukraine and uh, about our strong resolute going ahead in reforms and with reforms. And we are also going to show the huge potential of privatization in the country that we truly hope will start in the coming month and on a very transparent basis. And this will involve such important areas of uh, uh, energy sector, agri-industrial sector, uh, logistics, innovation, IT and others. Uh, besides representatives of the presidential administration, we are going to involve some top managers of Ukrainian companies to this forum and hope that Germany will follow the suit. But again, this is not a topic for our meeting today and I do know how strongly Anders feels for Ukraine because he is on the good side here with his advice genially trying to help us come out of this uh, gridlock and thank you Anders again uh, you've been advising and counseling the governments of Ukraine since 90s unfortunately not everyone uh, they have hid to your uh, to your advice and heard your advice and it is not a secret that you also helped me greatly uh, in my work uh, uh, governmental work uh, if you remember uh, how we closely worked together the first week after I became the minister. So the floor is now yours. Only thing is that just don't tell them all of the ideas, let them read through the book. So have the, and enjoy the book in the quiet of their homes. But just outline the key ideas. Thank you very much. I will speak English. Uh, I do understand. I, I can speak Russian. I do understand the Ukrainian to a certain extent, but I think that most of you do understand English and it will provide for a clearer understanding of my idea. My very good and old friend, Ivar, we know each other for uh, more than 12 years at least, so uh, I was very happy to see that uh, Ivar has became Minister of uh, uh, Economy uh, and I have not been disappointed. I think that it's uh, uh, quite a lot that the Minister of, uh, of Economic uh, Development and Trade has uh, accomplished here. Secondly, I would like to uh, thank uh, Valery Dratchenko here who has uh, uh, organized the, uh, the team of uh, four uh, translators who have very fast uh, uh, translated the book and the uh, Kiev Mohila, <laughs> stand up, uh, <coughs> uh, who have uh, very fast produced uh, this book which uh, looks uh, uh, very nice indeed and I hope that you will uh, appreciate it. And as I said here, I shall just try to put forward a few major ideas. First, what went wrong? There was no sharp break with the Soviet system. Under Leonid Kravchuk, for three and a half years, there was no economic policy. The consequence was two, hyperinflation and oligarchy. The oligarchy has been here since 93, 94. And it's uh, uh, not news. How do you make money on the oligarchy? 
on gas trade. You buy gas at one price and sell it at a 10 times higher price. That is privileged trade. And then you must have good relations with Moscow and you buy the people who are in charge in Kiev. This is how it has functioned and uh, this is what must uh, uh, be changed. Uh, I would say that there are three periods I, I followed the Ukrainian economic policy, I'm afraid since 1985, that's when I first came here. And uh, uh, there have been three periods of significant reform in Ukraine. 94, just after uh, uh, Leonid Kuchma was elected, that led to stabilization of prices after hyperinflation. The second reform period was in 2000, uh, when uh, finally Ukraine deregulated and uh, got enough of the privatization so that there could be economic growth. And then we saw big economic growth for uh, essentially eight years, 2000 to 2007, seven and a half percent growth a year. After that, we haven't seen much good in the economy until this year. And this is the biggest reform effort that has been accomplished. So uh, uh, more than 400 reform laws have been adopted this year. People complain. There are no improvements uh, visible as yet. Well, it is uh, uh, not, but there have been a lot of policy changes. And I would like to go through quickly with you now the ideas what has been done and what hasn't been done, what remains. And let me just start with this. Here you see the four big uh, countries in this area. And uh, you can see that the GDP per capita in purchasing power parities in 1990 and 2013. This is World Bank statistics. Ukraine has uh, now a GDP per capita that is 20% lower than it was in 1990. Uh, all the others have approximately doubled, in particular Poland that has more than uh, doubled. This is the consequence, most of all of bad economic policy during the first two, three years uh, that got uh, Ukraine stuck in rent seeking. So over to this, what should be done? I have put up here four or five things that should be done. Political reform, reform of the state, financial stabilization, energy reform, and social reform. These are uh, five big chapters in my book and the EU as a reform anchor. So let me go through these six pieces. Europe, what can Europe do? It should be a reform anchor. What Europe has is 250,000 pages of uh, acquis communautaire, common law. And uh, this provides legal uh, standards for everything. What EU should do is provide market access. It did so very well for the uh, countries in Central Europe that have become members of the European Union. It has not done enough at all for Ukraine. There are still 36 quotas for agricultural products. So everything that Ukraine is good at producing gets blocked after a while. Financial assistance should be easy for uh, the European Union to provide, but uh, uh, this is just shocking. Think of it, since 2010, the European Union has committed 300 billion euro to Greece, that has 10 million uh, inhabitants, and it has committed in the last two years 5 billion euro to uh, Ukraine. There's no comparison between these numbers. Of course, uh, Greece is a member of the European Union since long and member of the Eurozone, but is this strategy? Not really. And on technical assistance, I think that you have all seen that the European Union has not done all that much. Second point, where do you start? You start from the top. You start with, uh, uh, with politics. You must have leaders who want to do reform, otherwise nothing happens. So what you need then first? early presidential elections, otherwise nothing can happen. The second is early parliamentary elections, because if you don't have a parliament that adopt um, reform laws, nothing can happen. Therefore, we saw there was very little of reform legislation last year, and a, a substantial amount this year. And the new uh, government of young 
well-educated uh, outsiders like Ivaras and Dmitry Shimkiv here. These are the people who do reforms. You can't change the people who sit on the jobs. You have to change the people who sit on those jobs so that we are a new people. And this is what we have seen now. So about the parliamentary elections, what was wonderful was that 56% of the parliamentarians were new. What was bad was that 44% were old. And of course, the old parliamentarians are for a long time much more skillful than the new people who haven't learned uh, the tricks as yet. So uh, you need more renewal. Then, as I was mentioned, the reform program, which was focused, that came here on December 9th, and then decentralized power. This is a big issue, you know, I'm just touching upon it. So here we see on the political side, impressive achievements. Of course, not enough, but impressive. The next comes the state. What you need to do if you have a state that is basically predatory, that tries to steal from the population enterprises, it is to close all the bad institutions. Something has been done, more should be done. And uh, how many institutions have you cl uh, closed, uh, Ivaras? 16. 16, sorry, I put a dozen here. And uh, <clears throat> illustration of judicial reform. This is what I think is most important. Ukraine has 19,000 uh, prosecutors and 10,000 judges. By and large, everybody is considered corrupt. There might be 10% uh, exceptions, but kick them all out. This is what they did in East Germany. And bring in outsiders. Uh, Ukraine has lots of new lawyers, uh, newly trained. There are many who have got uh, training abroad. And there are also foreigners who could uh, jump in and work. Uh, this can be done, but then you have to have a political will. So far, we don't see the political will. This is, to my mind, the worst shortcoming in reforms to today that I would emphasize most. Deregulation, substantial process, but as I was mentioned, more can be done. Reform of public administration, apart from in the Minister of Economy and the Central Bank, not really as yet. This is something big also that needs to be done. Then financial stability. Here, frankly, almost all of it has been done. Floating exchange rate, IMF program, fiscal adjustment, uh, large foreign financing, and uh, of course now the restructuring. The restructuring is truly important. You hear now a discussion, should Ukraine really sign up to this restructuring? Of course. Why of course? because otherwise we will see a default, the whole reform effort will be wasted, and we will see a collapse in the Hryvnia, and the IMF program will stop instantly, and there is no future for some time. There's no reason not to approve of the restructuring now. If you are in a weak situation, you can't get a wonderful deal. This is the, the only deal that is available. Take it, and I know this should come up on uh, Thursday in the, uh, the Rada. So the financial stabilization has been impressive progress. And what I consider most important, as I refer to with the gas prices, it is uh, clean up the energy sector. It has been the main source of corruption at the higher level in Ukraine. And how do you do it? The first thing you, you do is to unify the energy prices. I would have preferred to see a full unification uh, and marketization of uh, energy prices this year. Hopefully it will happen next year. According to the plans, it will only be in 2017. Uh, abolish energy subsidies. 70% of this job has been done this year. This is the main part of the fiscal adjustment. And then provide social cash uh, compensation to the people who need it. There are some problems with it, but uh, it is underway. Create markets for all kinds of energy. It's legislated and should come into force for gas now uh, from the 1st of October. This needs to be <coughs> uh, done faster because energy is a big source of corruption. And uh, stimulate private energy production. It's not done yet. Needs to, to be done. Ukraine can be 
uh, self-sufficient in gas quite easily. And uh, it's only because of corruption inside the country that this has not happened as yet. And with regard to corruption, stop buying gas from ga Russia. Russia's gas sales to Ukraine is part of economic warfare in order to corrupt Ukraine. This is, uh, look up on Gazprom as an organized crime syndicate uh, with military purposes. There's no reason to deal with such a company. There are no alternatives. And uh, social policy, I'm not uh, going to now, but it can't wait. So, which are the big risks? Russian aggression that I'm not talking about here. You all know it. Underfunding. The EU and the US should step up financing. I would like to see $8 billion more for the reserves so that the exchange rate really holds. And then what you all talk about now, politics. The populism is uh, dangerous. We are seeing that the coalition is uh, in a hazardous way. And of course, looking up on these numbers of GDP that might fall with a double digit uh, this year and a high inflation, it's not uh, surprising that people are dissatisfied. It takes time for a, a reform to work through and it's vital now that it holds so that it's not broken up and that the regulation goes ahead. The thieving in the state enterprises that is really stopped because this is really a big thing. I would like to see uh, privatization of all irrelevant as state assets that don't really cost anything. Uh, I don't think that Ukraine can now privatize the big valuable uh, companies uh, as yet, but do away with all the smaller ones. Ukraine does not need 1,800 state enterprises when socialist France has 50. So, thank you very much. Thank, thank you for this com comprehensive overview. I think by way of going brief uh, critical evaluation, critical evaluation or continued discussion, I'd like to give the floor now to Dmitry Shinky from the presidential administration to share his vision of situations highlighted by Anders. Thank you. I will speak in Russian, given that Anders does understand Russian. And we'll, we'll, we'll save on interpretation and on time of our mutual understanding. I made acquaintance with Anders many years ago, thanks to my colleagues in Washington. And we discussed the future of Ukraine's development for many years. I read his first book. I read it in English. He then presented me with a book. It was a very nice research. of sure interest for those willing to understand what's happening in Ukraine. I thoroughly recommend you to, uh, to read the book to get the basic idea, the basic premise of things after. Uh, I think there are not many uh, researchers doing political and economic sides of things together in an attempt to explore uh, certain patterns leading to either good or bad scenarios. I've already had a glimpse of some chapters in this new book that Anders kindly sent me. And some of his uh, considerations were included in a number of documents uh, of, by presidential administration, by the cabinet. Uh, they were included in the strategy as well. And I can only thank him for his criticism, because it is always good. It helps developing. I'd like to uh, focus on several aspects that Anders mentioned in his presentation in an attempt to answer the question, what will be next, and what we should expect, and what needs to be corrected in the current situation. And, uh, what are our reflections to the current events uh, assisting the reforms should be. Uh, 
uh, having analyzed reforms, I came to a conclusion that uh, our successes come in the areas where we see no pressure or no difficulties. If we check for all our successes, uh, like the one we had with police, no one would uh, put Eka on hold. No one would help her either. But at least she was, she was not uh, being in problems with others' opposition. Uh, there was no great pressure against, say, public procurement efforts, because many would think that it's just a sort of a new game with new guys who had come to the presidential administration, to the government. And when everyone understood it was serious, and for sure, for sure uh, the tension started mounting. A uh, rather similar situation can be seen with petitions when at, this, at the outset everyone thought that uh, it is just nice and fine. Now many politicians think that uh, this may not be a very good idea to launch the petition site. That is, as soon as we see no uh, counteraction, we go with huge success. As long as we see vested interests in play, we see opposition, things start grinding to a halt. And coming to populism, you know, Ukraine has never loved Bolshevism. I'm uh, reading uh, some writings by Skoropatsky. I can tell you from him that uh, there was no love for Bolshevism in Ukraine ever, but nevertheless, people always had a sweet spot for socialism, for sweet promises. And unfortunately, time is now for the citizens to stop being populist uh, victims and for our uh, government officials to stop being populist themselves. Because we do need to build our entrepreneurial environment in the way they built it in the United States and elsewhere. If we are to have a nice and proud country, we need to do it. And we also need to understand that political elites in our system needs to mature at, le at last. Uh, they haven't managed to do it in 20 years, and it's about, for them, uh, it's about time for them to do it now. Also for the sake of uh, our proclaimed Europeanization, uh, and political elites should be better able to show respect to local communities, to fellow nationals. Uh, they need to be well versed in, in protecting the declared freedoms and rights, the ones that uh, were defended on the Maidan. Going back to corruption matters, first thing concerns law enforcement or rule of law that provides punishment for everyone in breach of relevant law. And here we go far behind many others. Uh, when it comes to prevention of corruption, and this is by far the most successful way of dealing with corruption, when you destroy, effectively destroy conditions leading to corruption, we see some substantial progress because we see things related to the regulation, simplification of procedures, simplification of redundant governmental structures, simplified and improved conditions on, for civil service, etc. These are the factors that will prevent corruption from happening in the future, but they have almost no influence on the current fight with the existing corruption. And this is uh, where we need to pay attention. We need to be more keen on enforcement of le relevant legislation, and we need to continue with our efforts to prevent corruption. Concerning the national economy of Ukraine, I strongly believe uh, it will be okay because uh, uh, and does, does share the positive feeling that many people in this country have he has always been telling me at the times when we were at our lowest, saying that uh, I truly support you and I believe in Ukraine. Thank you.
Thank you. I just wanted to tell Dmitry uh, about the many impressive results shown on those slides. And uh, last week I was to Odessa to, and I talked to journalists from the, there were questions to me, why did Christine Lagarde showed her content with us? Why uh, foreigners see more benefits and more positives in our developments? And maybe it's time for Gleb Wyszlinski to respond to this question. You know, when I read the book, I was inspired the most by the fact that Anders does not, he's not afraid of recommended some radical steps to be taken. Uh, there is a widespread uh, saying in the Ukrainian civil service, uh, which can be seen as ground for many bows. You know, the thing is untimely. This is what they say. Many things are deemed untimely, and this leads to abysmal situations. And uh, one of the best positives of experts like Anders is that they are sincere and open in their recommendations, also related to radical changes. I found it in the book uh, some things that are really relevant, highly relevant today, and uh, they might not be well perceived from the outset by many people in Ukraine. Say, many would say that it is not possible to sack all the judges at once, for example. But on the other hand, there, can, there, there are lawyers that are able to provide legal grounds for that, and they can advise as to how to do it in the best way. Changes are also necessary to decision-making processes for example, the procedure of countersigning administrative deeds and documents. Anders mentioned it under the notion V0 of Anie. And this is what Anders has been telling since 98. And today, in 2015, we see Max Nifyodov uh, coming, and he was at school at the, uh, that year of 1998. So Max tells how this counter signing is being done by visiting many offices, many cabinets, and having to collect many signatures. It is hardly normal that the system we inherited from our almost long forgotten Soviet past is still very much alive. And this is what Anders rightly mentions in his book that we've never broke in reality with the Soviet system. We need to reanalyze, reassess things that are relics of the past. And we need to consciously, consciously understand are we sure that we need to keep these things for after? Or take the thing with radical but cuts of public expenditures. Yes, we feel pity for Boris Paton, but the question is really, do we need the National Academy of Sciences in its current shape? Do we need their expenditures? Or take the state fiscal administration. It was created by a Zara when no one wanted to pay taxes. Nowadays, with practically every entrepreneur able to use internet banking, uh, personal electronic filing cabinets to communicate with the fiscal service, and by the way, it was mentioned at the forum of the uh, tax related forum of the reanimation package of reform in human. Uh, much has, was said about the electronic filing of documents or take free sales of land plots. There are discussions about things, all things around when people start discussing what types of limitations we need and when we are and how we are going to impose them. But has anyone ever regarded the question, do we really need these limitations? Maybe this is a clear limita uh, manipulation. Or take the free movement of capital, uh, the exchange and currency regulations that we have in place, they have been updated to re reflect the necessities and needs 
of say the f this year's February. But uh, in the nutshell, these regulations contradict the very nature of capital outflows and inflows. And if we are to follow Anders advice, we need to open the gates to the capital inflow in Ukraine to provide for economic growth here. As regards in, uh, higher retirement age, I th thoroughly advise you to read in the Anders book that uh, there is a passage there that says that young retirees become huge burden and they are also under strong pressure to support this unbalanced pension system which prevents them from being efficient performance before the time they retire. So this is a faulty situation that everyone is afraid of increasing the retirement age. Or take the fiscal reform. As soon as, as we go about financial performance results, we see uh, cash flow gaps. And then from here, no one goes further to the area of expenditure reduction. And as Mitri already mentioned it, uh, there are always those who say that no, it is not possible because it will topple the government and we will, leave, uh, we will end in political uh, crisis in the country. But on the contrary, we need strong enforcement to build up on the trust to the government. And if the government is to take complex and strong decisions, and if the government explains to the public why it is necessary, so this openness and swiftness will become a compensating measure that will pre uh, keep the trust and prevent it from eroding. And if we are to follow this way, then we'll be better able to continue with our economic policy to allow capitals following the route and flowing in the country as soon as possible to spur economic growth. And that way we'll be free of the vicious circle that we have seen for many years. And this will bring a radical change to the situation in Ukraine. I'd like to tell just from my side that this uh, notion of untimely thing uh, and uh, uh, this is really a very catchword, a uh, very popular catchword and owing to Ivaras, everyone has learned uh, the abbreviation of Kirtran Samyak, uh, or the thing about budgetary cuts, cuts of expenditures. And surprisingly, MPs uh, showed the good knowledge of all the budget lines that uh, are at the risk of being cut and they're exceptionally able to fight for that. We have some minutes to, uh, on Q&A to say either about the benefits and positives of reforms or about shortcomings to be tackled. Ilya Lukas, Znao uh, Information News Agency. My question is to Mr. Abramovich. Uh, could you bring two or three points in which Aslund uh, helped you at the moment when you were to take the office of the minister? And secondly, you said it that international experts have been noting the successes of Ukrainian reforms and there are reasons for some moderate optimism. But the question is when these results will be noted and seen by Ukrainian citizens. Because maybe it is just a coincidence that uh, there is a mention of some success of reforms uh, that this book has, but maybe it is just a coincidence before the upcoming elections, local elections that we're going to have. Well, it's very easy. What we paid attention to 
you know that the GDP to expenditure ratio uh, is 53 percent and for Anders and his colleagues in the reform team with the cabinet uh, Andrius Kubilius, Ivan Miklos, uh, Mr. Havrilish and Mr. Kalimon from Canada Given their previous experience with other countries, their first-hand advice was to cut public expenditures, and they strongly insisted on uh, getting rid of special uh, retirement benefits to individual groups and certain measures to change tariffs while helping low-income households, but again, measures to assist low-income households need to be done under additional specific mechanism. And we did it to the extent that now those feeling they're not uh, at par with, with current tariffs can simply file for a subsidy to cover the percentage of the utility costs. And this will also provide for, uh, for better fight against corruption, it will reduce our dependence on Russian gas, and it will provide for possibilities to invest in energy saving equipment. Uh, thank you for your nice question. You know, people like me, or IMF representatives like Christine Lagarde, they always check for the laws adopted in the country. And in this year, Ukraine did adopt more than 400 reformist laws. And I was did mention some of them, and that's quite a substantial work, reform-related work that has never been seen in Ukraine before. Uh, when question arises why business persons see no difference then this is obviously because the judiciary system is not uh, working properly in terms of defending ownership rights so it is really a problem i mean the judiciary but this does not it is not to say that nothing has been done or little has been done Surely a decisive step should be made to improve the judiciary system, to make it work as intended, to make it protect business and ownership rights. Uh, then coming to, to, to the people, people do check for main economic indicators. Take GDP, uh, it slumped 7% last year and 9% this year, 16% in total and it has been mainly due to the war with Russia, including the loss of territories from occupied Donbass and uh, sanctions uh, imposed uh, also by Russia against Ukraine and because of the lack of the earth of uh, foreign investments that won't ever come in a war torn territory because really foreign investors think that it is not safe in Ukraine at the moment because of the war raging in the east of the country and headquarters of bigger companies express very limited and careful attitude to that and surely this leads to reduction of living standards you can go just to Kretschatik to see In terms of when they may feel it better, we can only hope it will be early next year. But uh, you know, things like GDP growth, for example, it's they are very hard to predict. And uh, normally, the situation is that improvement starts two years into bigger reforms, and this is exactly the time when people are the most angry. Take Poland uh, after. Uh, November elections of 91, uh, when people strongly vote against communists and socialists at power. Uh, 
but effectively it was they were against communism, uh, communists, and communists promptly switched into socialism. But then it was enough to have Balcerovich sitting as the Minister of Finance for two years in the country to secure economic growth afterwards. And surely it was the time when the Poles were most angry and they thought of the country as a failed state that will never learn to do or produce anything and there will be no happiness in that country, they said. Similar situation is now in Ukraine, when people say that there is nothing good happening here. I can assure you it will change. I think with moderate optimism uh, transferred to the people, it uh, is easily converted into unrestrained optimism among experts. One good thing and one question. Uh, I'm very glad to hear the book is ready and out. The previous book I highly commended was The History of Success State, where uh, Bendukidze was present, Václav Havel, uh, Martlarka, Balcerovich, and many other uh, country leaders speaking about how it went nicely in their countries. And the only country that was said to have all the negatives was Ukraine. So very nice to see another book with another key points there. Secondly, the, the question comes, my involvement and in work with the government for the previous year and a half. It has shown me that nothing can be really repaired or restored to initial condition. The idea is it is necessary to demolish every bit that is there, and to build something new from scratch. Would you share this idea? And coming back to the idea of un something untimely, I have another notion that I'm re really ready to kill for. This is the notion of institutional memory. Uh, many people say about it at all levels of the civil service, and I think that we need to shoot those with institutional memory uh, memories uh, and uh, everything will change from that moment. You, I want us love because uh, you've been uh, your minister was already rigged from that institutional memory handicap by the time you joined the team. Okay, before you answer the question, I want to to to, to also check for question from this part of the hall. Well, let me first ask answer this question. Where and what to start with? Uh, Estonia is the country where nearly everyone was fired and it led to almost no corruption in the country. At least the level of it is definitely much less than in many European EU countries, simply because they built everything from scratch. Then you may surely say that that uh, Lviv did it in February of 1917 and, and, and it didn't really, uh, didn't really go in a nice way when uh, special services of Russian Empire uh, intervened. So what needs to be done? Take some institutions and sack them, get rid of them, take the General Prosecution Office. I think instead of 17,000, 4,000 will be more than enough. And this will not pose a huge problem and it will create, uh, contribute to retaining the important role. Uh, there are people with decent education that can be taken there or take the state security service. A big question is how many agents, foreign agents that are there? Maybe we should get rid of all of them. This is what they did in all the Baltic states. All the security service was sacked in due time because they sus were uh, suspicious that these services at that point of time were infiltrated by foreign agents. And then take other 
key places of key importance for government development. Take the social sector, nothing special has been done there or happening there. Uh, there are, on the other hand, enterprises that work nicely in Soviet times and continue working nicely at this point in time. So it is not necessary to, to sack just everyone, but you need to clearly see from top to the bottom what areas should be tackled. The only thing I'd like to mention that uh, we frequently speak of the government, but we need to be mindful of the parliament. I don't understand uh, there will be very important uh, sessions there in the coming week, but we need to clearly understand that there is a practical side uh, to second personnel uh, because we could sack uh, them and then they go to courts and are restored to their positions because of our labor regulations and to have change to have these changes permanent, we need consent from the parliament. The question is uh, either we are going to play socialism and we see a growing trend towards populist socialism or socialist populism growing all over the country and which brings lots of concern in many of our foreign partners because when they see the reformist intentions in the pro-western government they see a smaller pro-reform group in the parliament and they feel uh, that this is in the risk of being drowned in political populism. They do understand that everything may be lost in this country of Ukraine, and it is of paramount importance to support those people in the government who are doing very important thing. And we need to be mindful that populists have changed a bit to go with full flags and slogans on the streets again. Uh, they won't be calling themselves communism no longer, but they will nevertheless come up with new slogans to grab people's attention with ideas of uh, distributing everything among everyone without having any idea how to earn this and without even noticing how the country develops. Uh, ICTV channel, Taras Karniuk. My question is to the Minister of Economic Development and Trade. Kept several days ago, leaders of Medjlis of the Crimean Tartars announced the upcoming blockade to prevent goods being uh, supplied to the occupied Crimea. Uh, these goods are currently being shipped under the law and special economic zone of the, in the Crimea. Uh, will the government initiate uh, some changes into this law according to which Ukraine uh, cannot obtain any sort of revenue from that. And what is your reaction to the idea of the Crimean Tatars on that? I'm not ready to comment on that because I didn't see this specific um, announcement of Mitchell's. Natalia Belousova, Din Newspapers. Thank you, Mr. Aslund. Your books have always been interesting, and I'm looking forward to see your recommendation and advice. And from what I know now, one of your ideas was to reduce the number of uh, people involved in public administration. We do have a reform, though, but uh, it is not done in a fully, uh, fully fledged way. We have, say, the fiscal state fiscal service. On the other hand, we still have the Ministry of uh, Taxes and Revenues established already at the time of Klimenko. What would you... Uh, this is one thing. Uh, what would your advice be how to speed up the economy? Is it correct for the cabinet of ministers, for the National Bank of Ukraine, to continue with certain limitations on foreign exchange operations, uh, uh, in failing to promote the purchasing capacity of the population, um, the situation is now stalled in economy. And a question to Ivaras, uh, you've suggested recently a state holding to be established, you know what I'm talking about, 
Could you disclose more about when we can expect the stake holding to be established and what are the legal grounds for that? Uh, Natalia, no more questions, please. Just a, s a slight uh, uh, question. Why reforms are not largely perceived by the public in Ukraine? Because all the time you speak about reforms, it means that our retirees will have to live for less than 50 euro a month. Uh, would you like to live in a country with retirement benefits at the level of less than 50, hundred, uh, 50 euro? Let me take uh, several questions. I checked, uh, say, the Swedish uh, pension fund. They have uh, about 1,000 employees against 40,000 here in relevant authority here. No uh, substantiation or justification whatsoever. I'm not sure what they are doing sitting there, but I'm sure that these guys need to go away. It is about structural changes to be made. Similar situation, take check the central bank here. Uh, until recent time they had 11,000 personnel, a bit less now. In Sweden they have about 400 personnel in the central bank. That is, it is about old Soviet system of employment and the current management of the National Bank of Ukraine is really thinking now how to optimize personal strength and this is a good reform to be welcomed. Similar things need to be done in the fiscal system as well. We need to simplify this mammoth structure that has been construed and needs to be reviewed and decided upon. I cannot give you exact details of who to sack or what to do, but definitely it needs improvement and uh, a transfer to electronic filing of documents uh, needs to be completed. Uh, come into question of how demand should be spurred. You, can, you may not do it. You need to think about macroeconomic balance to see demand rising. I have mentioned that 53% of GDP in Ukraine went on public expenditure last year. In Romania and Bulgaria, in Slovakia, you will see three, 30 to 35%. It's better to have more money left with people rather than feeding the state. So, if you want to stimulate, start with supply. The average uh, salary in Poland now is about eight times higher than that in Ukraine, despite uh, the worst economic policy for, for the past years. How it can be changed? The float and exchange rate will mitigate bigger payment deficits the way it was until the last year. Macroeconomic balance needs to be restored. And it will again reduce deficit figures and it will mean lower uh, rates. Check the inflation rate which went to 53% in the last months. There will be no economic growth without reducing it at least to 20%, at least. And it can be done also through certain restrictive economic, fiscal and monetary policy. There are no other options here and you need to think for perspective. You need to think about the future. And again, we come here to a very important issue of populism. We see some parties here a telling of drastically reducing tariffs, utility tariffs, which will ultimately bring back oligarchs to trade in gas, uh, juggling with uh, prices. As regards low benefit, retirement benefits, this is 
this is one of the reasons of the lack of reform for more than 25 years. And if we had here 70, almost 70 years of communism, you will see uh, what dire conditions the economy was at for that long period. And it may not be changed in two years. As regards the holding company you mentioned, we've uh, devised a cabinet resolution and sent it for review to other line executive authorities to check for their feedbacks. On one hand, uh, we hear positive feedbacks to tell that ministries need not to govern public enterprises. Uh, there is, uh, it is necessary to isolate, say, 50 strategically important enterprises and make them and join them under an umbrella of a holding and uh, the remaining number needs to be sold transparently, professionally. And those in the holding will be distributed per sectors or subsectors. And the key question will be who will nominate the director general of this holding company? It will be the most important thing. Our suggestion is that it should be done through a nomination committee that we have established with five ministers, uh, each of them having investment banking experience behind, uh, behind their belt, and representatives of uh, IFC, BRD, business ombudsman, and rector of the Kiev School of Economics, as I said, an American, a Turk, a Lithuanian, an Azeri representative, and a Chinese. Uh, so it will uh, yeah, particularly having Chinese uh, among the team, uh, it will effectively prevent any attempts to find loopholes. And hopefully the idea will take root. Maybe there will be other, also other ideas how to properly nominate the person. But again, such holding companies uh, exist elsewhere in uh, Singapore, in Romania. And by the way, they outsourced uh, the holding creation and Sir Franklin Templeton, a US company, became winner and uh, they came up with dividends and share in shares increased, shares value increased on in the international exchange. And with just one Polish guy being at the top and the remaining staff being from Romania, nevertheless, they managed to collect a very professional team to govern this concern. And I know that many of us uh, in the ministry closely watch the situation. Will it need to be resolved in the best possible way for, the, for Ukraine? because we also understand that the way it is done now, it is not a correct way. I'd like to remind you that we have the Minister for Industrial Policy. They still exist, by the way. And there was some background thing in, uh, in this question. I don't understand it. And so there are still people working in the Ministry of Taxes and uh, Revenues. Uh, I do know of people who have until recent time worked in the Secretariat of Administration of the President. Problem is that we have a very socialist labor legislation. It is next to impossible to sack these guys that are definitely redundant because they managed to leave, to have maternity leave, even men. Uh, they go on sick leave for ages. Uh, they try all sorts of sabotaging these decisions. They try to go to to the sectoral unions. Or uh, you know there are institutions, government institutions with two or three institutional trade unions there that provide triple coverage of them. And they want their salaries be retained through the time of this fight without producing anything meaningful. So, counter question to you. Could you please talk to MPs 
to break the ice. They've been addressed and approached many times with the ideas of changing the socialist uh, labor legislation. But unfortunately, it is the parliament, the MPs, who vote, or better said, do not vote for that. And this is, you know, a place where long-standing socialist traditions still remain in danger. Uh, yeah, really so. It is uh, about not just political will, it is about certain political steps to be taken. How to translate this into specific decisions made by the parliament? Because every time we come up with certain stakeholders in the process that step up against innovative decisions, uh, may I use my voluntarist side to cut short the discussion because we're short on time and you have a very rare chance to have a, your copy of the book signed by the authors and all our speakers are really open for discussion and uh, if you still have questions feel free to ask your questions after this presentation Thank you for your participation and involvement, and please don't forget to continue with uh, debates and discussion after this official side. Uh, dear colleagues, unfortunately, the number of copies is 